Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Mayor Karen K. Go. Good evening. It's my pleasure to call to order the 515 regular city council meeting of October 11th, 2023. It's great to have uh, the participation of our community. Do we have any students from BC? Welcome to all of you renegades. Uh, anyone from CSUB? Welcome uh, Roadrunners and any other students here. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it, and we hope that you'll gain something out of the civic process. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember Arias. Councilmember Weir. Here. Councilmember Smith. Councilmember Freeman. Here. Councilmember Gray. Here. And Councilmember Core. Thank you. Tonight we have the pleasure of having Pastor Jason Hanish from Discovery Church lead us in the invocation. Pastor, congratulations on 10 years of serving this community. I know you just celebrated your anniversary. And I saw on your website that you have reached over 60,000 in your outreach over the 10 years. So thank you for that service. And then following the invocation, we have Lily. Uh, Valladeras Macias, who's a senior at Highland High School, who's going to lead us in the pledge. She's a Ward 2 Commissioner, President of Highland's Academic Decathlon, CSUB BC Orchestra, and she served the city of Bakersfield as our first Youth Jobs Program summer intern cohort in the Rec and Parks Department. She's working towards her associate's degree in public health through Kern High School District's early college program program. So we're glad to have both of you, Pastor. Uh, would you all please stand now? It's a privilege to be here with uh, you all and honor to pray over this. Thank you for the invitation for invocation. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you to lead and to serve your people. We pray, God, for your wisdom over our council members, over all proceedings, over all elections, God, in a culture and world that constantly shifts and changes. I pray that we will be led by your truth, be led by your word, that we will be established on a firm foundation, God. I thank you, Lord, for your protection and your guidance today in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in honoring the flag of our great nation. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be seated. And Pastor and Lily, you're welcome to stay, but uh, this would be a time when you can also leave to do other things, which I am guessing you have many other commitments. <coughs> Here are a few guidelines to help our meeting run smoothly. We request that you turn off your phones. Please be courteous in the use of cameras and videos for safety reasons and as a courtesy to others, no signs are allowed in the council chamber or in the lobby. Applause is allowed during the presentations portion of the meeting, but not during other portions of the meeting. Everyone in attendance is expected to adhere to the rules of decorum established by resolution of the city council. Failure to abide by the city's rules of decorum, including any disruptive behavior that interferes with our ability to have an orderly and efficient meeting, prevents the city council from conducting the business of the city. Behavior that disrupts the meeting includes repetitive statements, going off topic, shouting, and outbursts from the audience, and also surpassing the two-minute time limit. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Public statements. 
Thank you. In keeping with Council's resolution, the public statements portion is now divided into two periods. There's a period for items listed on the meeting agenda and for items not on the meeting agenda. Statements for items listed on tonight's agenda are given a two-minute time limit, 20 minutes total per agenda item. The consent calendar as a whole constitutes one agenda item. Statements regarding items not listed on the agenda are given a two-minute time limit, 20 minutes total. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, give them to the city clerk who will give copies to the council. If you're here to make a public statement, please fill out a public speaker card and give your completed card to the city clerk. We ask that you mark whether you're here to speak on an item listed on tonight's agenda or in a matter not on the agenda. Speakers who do not identify a specific agenda item will be presumed speakers for the non-agenda portion. Those speakers will be called during the non-agenda portion of the meeting. We're very interested and concerned with your issues. However, do Due to the public notice requirement of the Brown Act, council can't take action when an item isn't on the agenda. The council can, however, refer your matter to committee or request that staff contact you. Madam Clerk, do we have any public speakers regarding items listed on tonight's agenda? Mayor Go, we have received uh, two public speaker cards for items listed on tonight's agenda. The first public speaker is Mary Helen Barrow, speaking on item 7E. Thank you. Welcome, Ms. Barrow. Good evening, everybody. It's been a while since I've been here. And I first want to give credit for my awareness on this important topic to the Bakersfield Californian. Support your local media. I'm here to address the issue of COVID. There's a resolution for your consideration, and I want you to think about these before you vote. Unless things have changed greatly when I was involved in government and related government agencies, I don't think that a local government agency has the legal authority to override most California state and federal regulations. So please consider that before you vote. Also, this COVID issue is greatly going to affect students, school teachers, schools, and the districts. They could be at risk, and especially I'm a credential teacher in a closed environment, COVID spreads quickly, and the disruption, confusion, and illnesses could be chaotic and a great detriment to students. Also, from the standpoint of a small business, which I was for over 25 years, most businesses have city, county, state, regional, and or federal licensing regulations that they have to comply with. So if you implement something for Bakersfield, please remember that your businesses not only have to comply locally, they may have to comply with all those other levels of regulations as I did for over 20 years. Also- Thank you, Ms. Barrow. Your yes. time is up. Can you bring oh. your comments to a close, please? Okay. Um, also, I want to remember that if somebody gets sick because of COVID, your businesses could be uh, liable for businesses and loss of customer confidence when the word gets around that your place isn't safe to go to. So please think of our local businesses when you're going to vote on this. It's, thank you, Ms. Barrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Wendell Wesley Jr. on item 7D and E. I want to start Welcome. with E, if that's okay. Sure. Okay, uh, my name is Wendell Wesley uh, Jr. I want to thank you, council members, city management. Um, COVID was very hard on all of us. Um, I was at high risk in three, maybe four different categories. I survived that. A lot of businesses did not survive that. It was hard on our children. It was just excruciating hard. But we came out of it. Bakersfield is strong. America is strong, OK? I really believe we should uh, really uh, pay attention to the science. And our lives are more valuable than any profits that are out there.
because if you're not around to enjoy it, then it, it means nothing to any of us. So we need to protect our businesses. We need to protect our livelihoods. And we learned a lot. You know, we could take that situation and take a look at what we learned, what businesses failed, what businesses succeed, how they succeed. And we, of course, we could also learn what we can do better. Take what we did wrong and learn from it, and let's make it better. Heaven forbid this never happens again, but if it does, we need to be better prepared for it. Thank you. Um, on to D, the Community Land Trust. Um, when I look at community land trust, it's not just about um, providing housing uh, for our nonprofits or for, for, for people in residence. Running it through a nonprofit would be the best way to actually do that and make it affordable. But when we look at affordability, we look at what does that do for our community? Uh, affordability means less crime when you really get down to it. We have a lot less crime if things are affordable. When things become unaffordable, naturally, some people get very desperate. Me, I get on my knees, I pray, I go to the body of Christ, I know I'm gonna be all right. I know that there are things in place that can help me. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Wesley, your time is up. Can you bring your the, comments to a close, please? For the second one? Okay, um, so um, basically, community land trusts are good things, and um, we should actually seriously uh, consider doing community land trusts for the betterment of all of Bakersfield and Kern County. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, any others? Mayor Go, we have one additional public speaker, Emma De La Rosa. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening, my name is Emma De La Rosa, Regional Policy Manager with Leadership Council. I'm providing comment on behalf of my colleague, Sandra Plasencia, regarding the Community Land Trust. Um, first of all, we definitely support the establishment of a community land trust and we you know, applaud you all for taking initiative and incorporating this as a, as a resolution. We definitely have some edits and some uh, recommendations that we'd like to provide to make this stronger and also to support the housing element for the city. Uh, we want to, we urge the city to um, adopt the resolution with edits tonight that um, incorporate uh, language that commit the city and the nonprofit to collaborate with community to develop policies and pr procedures for the community land trust, language to equitably distribute the community land trust, and language to commit to a transparent community engagement process. We also urge the city council, city staff, to include the community land trust um, as an ordinance in the six cycle housing element. Right now, the housing element does not include a uh, community land trust, and I think that's a, that's a missed opportunity. Um, based on the HCD's um, findings determination letter, you know, the city can do way more to affirm affirmatively further fair housing, and this is a way that you can do that. So we strongly recommend that you include the community land trust ordinance in the housing element as a program. Um, also wanted to raise some questions about the fact that the nonprofit is not named in the resolution. Not sure if that's because um, the nonprofit has not been identified yet. If that's the case, then we strongly encourage and urge um, city council, city staff to work with community to um, identify that nonprofit and to be uh, to work with community along the entire establishment of this uh, community land trust. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Delarosa. Vice President. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Ms. Delarosa, for your uh, feedback tonight. Um, for your benefit, for the benefit of the community, uh, tonight's resolution um, authorizes the establishment of the Community Land Trust as an organization, as a nonprofit organization. There are far more details to work out as time moves forward, and those conversations will be had at this dais. Ms. Gennaro, is there anything else you'd like to add? Mayor, Vice Mayor, uh, thank you very much. You took the words right out of my mouth. This was just really to get back um, to the Vice Mayor and the Council and let the Council know that the City Attorney's Office is taking the appropriate steps to form uh, the nonprofit um, so that if the Council does not vote in favor of it tonight, then my office isn't going to expend uh, those types of resources. So we are in the infancy stages and we will definitely be coming back uh, to the community and to the Council. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Thank you. Madam Clerk, any more speakers on the agenda? Marigo, that was our final speaker on agenda items. We have two additional speakers for non-agenda items. Thank you, would you call them please? 
first public speaker is Pastor Mike Jenkins. And while Pastor's coming up, uh, we welcome the office of Assemblywoman Dr. Jasmeet Baines here. Thank you for being here. Welcome, Pastor Mike. Good evening, Honorable Mayor Go, and to the council members. My name is Pastor Mike Jenkins. I'm a local pastor here in Bakersfield, California, and I'm standing with other pastors uh, that are coming together to bring unity in the city uh, through prayer. And we know that our city uh, needs prayer. We know that prayer is always in order. This will be a quarterly event that will be coming together. Uh, the first night will be here uh, in Bakersfield at Grace Assembly Church of God. Pastor Eddie Summers is the host pastor. And to start off, we've already reached the office of our mayor to see if her agenda will be available or she can attend to lead us out in prayer. A pastor that's already committed is Pastor Trico Matthews, uh, Pastor Emmanuel from Stay Focus Ministries, uh, Pastor Van Max Van Dyke of Kingdom Harvest Alliance, uh, Councilwoman Jacqueline Sullivan from In God We Trust. Uh, also, there will be worship rendered that night from Aaron Perlman. We know that he's our weather guy here, but he's also a believer, and he'll be leading out in worship that night. Pastor Gray of New Life Church will represent uh, Pastor Ranger. So this night is just a night that we'll be coming together to let our city know that we're here as pastors to lead out. Uh, we need the body of Christ as leaders and men and women of God to lead out so that there will be a peace. Last night we were able to be there with our Jewish rabbi to let them know that they're standing with them in prayer and just let them know our mayor that we're with you as pastors here in the city of Bakersfield to pray and hold up our city and our families. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Jenkins. Madam Clerk, next speaker. Wendell Wesley, Jr. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, California Avenue Senior Housing um, is host to a lot of veterans and people with disabilities. And uh, the main office uh, where we have to go get our laundry cards doesn't have um, a crosswalk from the two buildings over to the one, and it doesn't have a wheelchair accessible ramp to get over to that location. That location also, um, people will speed down that street, so speed bumps will be extremely helpful in both directions. And there's a school right there at the corner of 10th Street and in as well, and it needs a four-way stop. Um, but in the summer, it gets really bad. We really like to see something, a four-way stop with some lights. Uh, these are very critical needs. Um, there's been major accidents there already. And um, like I said, these are um, veterans, seniors, people with disabilities, and um, they're in peril enough as it is with the conditions there. So having something like that will go a long ways and would extremely mean a lot and also provide a safety element that is much needed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wesley. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for the feedback. That's really important for us to know. And thankfully, the City Council adopted a traffic calming handbook for neighborhoods throughout the city of Bakersfield. And tonight, I'd like to ask Mr. Strzokalus if we can take a look at this area and see what treatment we might be able to uh, employ in this particular section in order to help uh, improve pedestrian safety. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Do we have any other speakers? Mariko, that was our final speaker. Thank you. Next item, please. Consent calendar items 7A through 7B for approval. A staff memorandum was provided transmitting correspondence on item 7E. Mayor, I have two requests. One to pull item 7E for se separate consideration, and I believe uh, Council Member Weir uh, would like to vote separately on item 7V. Um, and before I make a motion, I believe there's a question regarding some, uh, a particular item from Council Member Freeman. Council Member Freeman. Um, thank you, yes, on 7AG, uh, and that's regarding the um, amendment to the consultant contract for the, uh, uh, I think it's MLK Park. Um, 
it says that we're going to 30% construction documents for the park, the pool, and buildings. I know, AG. Do I have the wrong uh, one? Sir? Oh, I'm reading the wrong one. Would you please take a seat? Thank you. <laughs> that already happened. Oh, I still have a question. We, we had a vision plan for the park that included a potential $50 million building, which I personally don't think is feasible. Does this say we're going to 30% construction drawings on the $50 million building? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, to 80 million. Okay, uh, I guess that already passed. Uh, so be it. Thank you. Vice Mayor, motion. I make a motion to approve the consent calendar items with the exception of items 7E and 7V. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. All right. Can you press your help button? Um, Councilmember Weir's screen is blank. Can we just do a voice vote, please? And then technology, can you work on it, please? Vice Mayor Gonzalez? Aye. Councilmember Weir? Aye. Councilmember Freeman? Aye. And Councilmember Gray? Aye. Motion is approved with Councilmembers Arias, Smith, and core absent. Thank you. And now 7E. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this item, 7E, um, is a resolution declaring any COVID-19 related mandates unenforceable. I have a series of questions tonight. The pandemic we know was horrible and traumatic for lots of people in lots of different ways. Obviously, we know in many of our communities, including in downtown, small businesses lost business. Many people lost their businesses, but we know families lost their loved ones. We know that children lost educational opportunities by being out of school for so long. People lost their jobs. Uh, many of us, uh, in response to so much loss and so much uh, heartache and hardship, uh, got straight to work. Uh, we, this council actually uh, went forward and adopted a outdoor dining ordinance so we can help restaurants get back open as quickly as possible. We had this can-do spirit about us. We were trying to make this uh, pandemic uh, work for all of us and help our economy, help our local community get back to normalcy as best as we can. I worked with nonprofits like Children First where we were handing out desks and headphones to children in disadvantaged neighborhoods in East Bakersfield so that they can find some sort of peace and quiet when they're studying and trying to receive instruction via um, Zoom. Uh, we organized food distributions, countless nonprofits working every single day trying to give and deliver uh, critical uh, food items to people who were struggling. And we've all worked with countless businesses trying to figure out strategies for them to stay open. Now, tonight, three and a half years later, we're receiving a resolution related to mandates. And I, I, I don't know why. Why now? Why wasn't this coming up three and a half years ago? And so I want to ask Councilman Weir, why now? Why, why not three and a half years ago? Do you wish to answer? Councilmember Weir. Why now? Because COVID is out there. It is uh, not going away. And mandates aren't going to prevent it. If you want medical care, if you want to take care of yourself, your children, the people that are near to you, you need to have the freedom and the chance to make choices about their lives, your life, and the community. 
So this is not going away. And mandates aren't going to help it. So if we're going to take a stance on it, and now is the time to do that, not when we're in the middle of something that we don't know what's going to happen. But we certainly, at least me, I certainly don't want the state or the federal telling me what I need to do and what they want me to do. Because it's my choice and it's your choice for the medical services that you receive, make sure they're yours. Don't, don't let it, don't feed it off to the government. We've seen that now. We've seen it happen. I've read papers with Fauci coming back and saying that most of the people that bought and wore masks during the pandemic those masks were useless, but you still had to wear them. And there are problems even with masks that are useless, apparently, but even with the N95, there are, uh, there are cautions you should take before you um, indulge in the N95. There are consequences of having that mask on. And if you want, I could read you some of those, but I don't, I don't think we need to do that. It's coming, and we should have a choice in what our medical needs are. And now's the time to make that choice tonight. Thank you, Councilmember Weir. Okay, well, I appreciate that, but this didn't come up three and a half years ago when the state was actually mandating that we uh, do certain things in the stay-at-home order. So I find that kind of curious, but I'll take it at your word. So item 2D on this resolution, I'm going to read it. It says this, that the city of Bakersfield will not enforce any mandate requiring the administration of a vaccine further within city of Bakersfield. A person shall not compel or co coerce an individual lawfully residing or employed in or otherwise enjoy the conveniences of the city into obtaining a medical treatment involving the administration of a vaccine, whether or not approved or authorized by the United States Food and Drug Administration, contrary to the individual's vaccination preference. And then 2E states that a health care provider may not provide to an individual lawfully residing in the city a medical treatment involving the administration of a vaccine approved or authorized by the United States Food and Drug Administration unless the provider obtains the individual's informed consent before administering the vaccine. When did this ever happen? Councilmember Weir? When, when, when did any healthcare provider provide without consent an, an administration of a vaccine? What evidence do we have that that occurred in the city of Bakersfield? I don't have evidence of that and I hope it never happened. Well, it but didn't happen. We certainly don't want it to happen. And it didn't happen, for the record. That well, did not I don't occur. know that. I, well, I, I do know that because I talked to the public health director earlier today. Well, that doesn't there's no mean evidence anything to me. Well, they are, the, they are the health officer of record for our region. Okay, let me, let me move on. Um, item 2G states, a person may not take an adverse action or impose a penalty of any kind against an individual lawfully residing in this city for the individual's refusal or failure to obtain a medical treatment involving the administration of a vaccine. How, practically speaking, would the city of Bakersfield enforce this? understand your question. It's item 2G, it's, it's 2G in the resolution. I'll read it again. A person, it states that the city of Bakersfield will not enforce any mandate and a person may not take an adverse action or impose a penalty of any kind against an individual lawfully residing in this city 
for the individual's refusal or failure to obtain a medical treatment involving the administration of vaccine. How is this enforced in the city of Bakersfield? How would this, practically speaking, be enforced in the city of Bakersfield? You know, um, there are a lot of things that happen and a lot of things we need to be aware of and a lot of things we need to be cautious about and things still go wrong and they still happen. This, this resolution is about choice. It's about choice of your medical care. If you don't want to follow this, fine. If you want to be under a mandate, fine. You can be under a mandate. But everything on here, it, I, I don't know that it's happened or it hasn't happened. I, and, uh, I was asking about enforcement. How do we enforce this as a city? Do we have the police department engage? I mean, help me out here. How are we going to practically enforce this element of the ordinance? Well, Mayor, Vice Mayor, if you're speaking specifically on item G, the way I look at um, um, item G, it's really for civil cases. So in other words, if an individual does not get vaccinated um, and there's an allegation that because you did not get vaccinated, you therefore caused me to get COVID and I somehow suffered, um, this could be used as perhaps um, in that civil lawsuit as evidence one way or the other. Now, if you're asking me as a general rule as to how the entire resolution is to be enforced, I would tell you, it's just like anything else. I mean, we'll enforce it uh, where the city already has jurisdiction to enforce. And my, my, in drafting this, um, you know, enforcement is always, is generally always a concern for the city attorney with resolutions as well as ordinances. In this particular case, it's not so much of a concern because what the resolution says is we're not enforcing anything. But so it, we'll deal with, we'll deal with enforcement like I do with most. We'll deal with it when the situation arises. No, it actually does include enforcement. We're enforcing the unenforcement. I mean, a person may not take adverse action. It states here, a person may not take adverse action or impose a penalty of any kind against an individual lawfully residing in this city for the individual's refusal or failure to obtain a medical treatment involving the administration of vaccine. First and foremost, where does this actually happen? When did this happen? The only place I can think of this happening frankly, is in our healthcare settings, where healthcare providers uh, were asked and actually mandated to receive a vaccine. But in those cases, there was an avenue for them to become exempt. There was a declination form where individuals, for religious reasons or other personal beliefs, they could actually decline uh, a vaccine treatment. The other question I have is if we were to adopt this ordinance, how does that conflict with hospitals' uh, regulatory framework? Okay, they actually, okay, okay. I, I'm not done. I, I, well, I wasn't done either. The hospitals. Listen, let's go back to item G. A person may not take an adverse action or impose a penalty against an individual. So a person cannot take action against the uh, individual lawfully residing in the Baker's, in the city of Bakersfield because for the individual's refusal or failure to obtain medical treatment involving the administration of a, of a vaccine. It, we're not saying that they're in trouble if they don't do that. We're saying you cannot take action against them for not doing that. It's plain and simple. Yeah, so the question there is how do we enforce it? And my question, and my point is that- What is there in to the enforce? Pointing, what is there to enforce in that, in that paragraph? If a, There's nothing it, to enforce. It says a person may not take adverse action. If a person takes- Okay, a person cannot take adverse action against somebody lawfully residing in the city of Bakersfield because that individual refusal 
or failure to obtain medical treatment involving the administration of a vaccine. It's clear as it could be. Okay, so if a person then does take adverse action, what happens? Madam City Attorney, you commented on enforcement. W would you like to continue? Actually, I think, actually, I think this is self-explanatory. You cannot take adverse action. You can't do it. Okay. Or impose a penalty against an individual lawfully residing in this city for that individual's refusal or failure to obtain medical treatment. You can't do that. You can't force them to do that. Okay. The, the other point I wanted to make is that there are uh, healthcare professionals that was pointed out by Ms. Barrow. There are other business entities that are regulated by the state of California. And so they're, in fact, they have to follow certain regulations that are established by the state. Final and, two questions. And since I'm being grilled up here or talked to up here, and since, state, state your statement again, please. What statement? The last statement. There are certain entities like hospitals that, for example, have a regulatory framework that are, hospitals locally are regulated by the state of California. Yes. By CMS. Yes, they are. And? And so a state public health mandate would require hospitals to comply and so? How does that conflict with hospitals that exist within the jurisdiction in the city of Bakersfield with this ordinance? I don't think it changes anything for them. These hospitals would be in conflict with this ordinance. No, this is the city of Bakersfield. The hospital, if, if it, the hospital has its own charge, its own code of ethics, it has its own rules. Mr. Nair, is that how you understand it? Mayor, Vice Mayor, first of all, I'd like to point out this is not an ordinance, first and foremost. This is a resolution. And getting back to the enforcement, first, first and always, it only has the power to be enforced where I already have jurisdiction to enforce. So if I don't have jurisdiction to enforce in school districts or hospitals, it wouldn't Again, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't carry the weight that it would in other, in other scenarios. I would also point out that the point is, of it is I'm not enforcing any mandate on those that decide not to get something done. Um, so I believe I've answered both of your questions. Is there anything else? Just two more questions. <laughs> um, did the city ever endorse or ever enforce mandates during the pandemic? Vice Mayor, uh, we did not um, enforce, uh, do, do community enforcement on mandates. There was uh, a few instances in which the Public Health Department requested support from law enforcement as they were um, uh, doing uh, you know, heavy um, loads of noticing and en enforcing uh, some of um, their uh, public health mandates. Uh, but we did not as a city. And did the County of Kern ever issue a public health order or mandate? Do we know? There was a declaration of emergency um, that uh, established um, their uh, authority to essentially uh, abide by state mandates that were put in place. All right, thank you. Um, my main point is we have so many other issues to address that are practical in nature related to the city and whether it be crime, neighborhood safety, homelessness, the list goes on and on. This is nothing more but a performance piece. It's performative in nature. Um, no one's talking about shutdowns on our roadway right now. Um, I, I don't think this is necessary. I'm not in support. Thanks. Councilmember Gray. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Councilmember Gonzalez, you asked the question, why now? 
why now because there has been talk of mandates on the local news there has been talks of federal mandates it's time that we get ahead of this thing we don't need to be behind the eight ball on it because there could be possible mandates to come and what council member weir is trying to do is to create a free zone in our city to where we can make our own choices a free zone that means you can wear a mask if you want to. You don't have to wear a mask if you want to. You can get a vaccine if you want to. You don't have to get a vaccine if you don't want to. It's a matter of freedom of choice. I believe the constituents that voted for me voted for me because I am one for freedom. I speak to freedom. The second meeting that I, after I was elected to this office, in um, 2021, in, in January of 2021, I took my mask off because I wanted to be able to show my constituents who voted for me to have freedom in this country that I was standing with them. We have enough government overreach every single day in our life. And when the government begins to tell us how we are, handle our own body, our own health, our own decisions, that our kids are gonna be yanked out of school, they're two and three grades behind now because of this. They're failing. Look at the test scores all over the United States. They're failing. In LA, 63% of uh, uh, junior hires can't even read at third grade level. What are we doing? Small business? Mary, I'll talk to you about small business. I'm a businesswoman. I know how hard it is to earn a profit. And Ms. Barrow, uh, you're out of order. Go ahead, Ms. Uh, Councilmember Gray. Businesses have been affected horribly all over the United States, thousands of them going bankrupt, losing their livelihoods. Can anybody in this audience tonight think of losing your, uh, your livelihood entirely? If you're a teacher, if you work for the city, if you have own your own restaurant, if you own your own small business, can you imagine that? Is that where we want to go back to, where we're going backwards instead of forward, where we're not thinking about our own personal freedoms? I don't want to go backward. I don't want these kids to lose their education again. I don't want to see the rate of suicide that went through the ceiling during COVID, especially amongst teenagers. Isolation, depression, is that where we want to go? So why now? Because I want to get ahead of the ball. I don't want to wait till it's too late, Councilmember Gonzalez. I want to get ahead of the ball. I want to create a free zone in our city that our citizens can make the decisions they want to make for themselves without us as a city telling them how they're going to run their lives and live their lives. So this is why, excuse me, Amen. excuse me. Outbursts from the audience are not appropriate. Continue, Councilmember Gray. So, and now after three years of research, three years, I went online today and I've, I've looked at a lot of stuff. And there are so many conflicting, so much conflicting research out there that we cannot come to any conclusion if the mask helped or the mask didn't help. There was a study of 43 different countries that a gentleman sent me, and it in the very first paragraph, 32 pages, it said we can't come to conclusion if anything was better or worse with sheltering in place. Those are, the, those are the studies, the old studies you're looking at in 20 and 21, they're all like, mask it up. The newer studies, when they're seeing all the destruction to our children, especially in our education system, thanks for the, to the teachers union, 
keeping our kids at home. Those are the studies that I'm not paying attention to. I'm paying attention to those studies that were just coming out this year when they had two or three years to look at data. So as for me, I'm gonna support this resolution because I believe it's gonna help us to prevent city government to impose on us as local citizens. And as a local government, we've lost so much of our autonomy from the federal government and the state government threatening us every time they're gonna take money away from us for housing or this and that if we don't step in line with them. We better start thinking, people, and quit stepping in line every time the government tells us to. Because as Ronald Reagan said, the scariest word you will ever hear knocking on your door, hi, I'm from the federal government. I'm here to help you, or the government. So let's start thinking a little bit different. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Gray. Councilmember Freeman. Um, so <clears throat> questions addressed to the city attorney. Um, do we need to insert, or is it just automatically understood um, in this resolution that uh, the phrase within our legal authority? From our discussions here, or is it obvious that it's only within our legal authority to begin with? You know, we don't control schools, we don't control federal employees, we don't control all of these other things. But to the extent we have the legal authority or jurisdiction, uh, <clears throat> uh, Jenny, do we need to put that in or is that just automatically understood? Mayor, Vice Mayor, I would say to you that it's automatically understood. I, I couldn't okay, enforce okay. it even I, if I... To me it yeah. was, but I didn't know. Yeah. There were a lot of comments here uh, from people that seemed to be thinking we... Uh, we were, by doing this, we're over overruling, <laughs> which we cannot do, the state government, the federal government, and other, other bodies. So this, I believe this is only within our legal authority, which eliminates a great many of the objections we've heard today, including hospitals. I don't think we have the legal authority to uh, um, tell them they cannot, if a hospital says the nurses have to wear masks, I think they have to, I don't think we, have authority in that area. So I just wanted to, to mention that. Um, the other thing is I do remember, I believe I remember, that when we had a lot of mandates in the past, which were from the state and the federal government, uh, the city didn't put mandates in place, as I remember. Um, the, um, <clears throat> the sheriff said, I'm not going to enforce this because um, it's impossible. I don't have enough officers to hit the, 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 you know, the priority one crimes much less to put someone every, in every building and every corner to enforce. So really isn't a question of enforcement anyway. Um, but uh, I, I, I guess I, I'm sympathetic to the spirit of, of the resolution with full knowledge that there are many areas we don't have legal authority over anyway. So thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Freeman. Councilmember Weir. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to ask the Vice Mayor a question. Go ahead. When is the next time COVID or a pandemic is coming to California or to Bakerson? When is the next pandemic coming to Bakersfield? When is it? I am not a public health expert or an epidemiologist or any type of, I don't have the credentials to give you an answer. I'm, uh, that is not my role on this dais to give nice. you a public health response. So you don't know? No. Okay. You know, We are going to be faced with a pandemic in California in particular. 
and there's much talk about pandemics and when they might appear or if they don't appear, that's even better. But we need to know if another pandemic or COVID comes in or whatever, we need to know what we can do and what we can't do. In knowing what we can do and knowing that we have our own choice of what we're going to do with our own medical health. And if you want to be under a mandate or if you want to do any of that, we're not prohibiting that. You can do it. You can do it fine. No problems. Me, I'm not going to do that. And there are many people in this town that are not going to do that. And so at that point, the city of Bakersfield is in, is in a dilemma. They can either try to enforce it or not. We don't have time for that. The city doesn't have time for that. So what do we do? Well, for me, I'm going to enjoy my freedoms and my right to pursue the medical uh, information that I need. And you can do that too. And you should do that too. What we're saying is all other um, circumstances aside, the city's not going to enforce the items in this, in this document. And I think that's a great thing. I think people should be happy about that. And if you're not, I'm sorry. But the realization is People need to have a choice. They don't need somebody telling them, especially a state or federal government, telling them what they have to do because I don't think they know what to do most of the time. So this allows us the freedom to do as we choose, as we want to, and it allows you to do the to have the same freedoms. There's, it, it, there's nothing that's going to hurt you in this. But it will give you the choice. And choice is always better than a mandate. And I move to approve. You have a motion? Please catch your votes. Motion is approved with Vice Mayor Gonzalez voting no and Council Members Arias, Smith, and Kaur absent. Thank you. And now 7B, Council Member Weir. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got on where I was going to call that item. Oh, I said I'm sorry. I move to approve item 7V. 7V. Do we have any comments? I don't see any. You have a motion? Please catch your votes. Motion is approved with Council Member Weir voting no. And council members Arias, Smith, and Core absent. Thank you. 
Next item, please. Council and mayor statements. I don't see any requests to speak. And so tonight we stand adjourned at 610. Thank you for participating.